Welcome to Vader Box, the show where we review your pitches. I'm Bambi Francisco. This week's theme, sort of a mixed bag. We're actually, Ezra Roy has been pointed out. Today, this week's theme is actually, we're going to be looking at companies that start with a letter C. Yeah, it's an excellent topic, and really there's a, it's a huge swath of companies. You know, somewhere roughly around 126 of all companies. <laughs> oh, so we had a favorite letter, yeah. and G, look at Cisco. Yeah, What's Cisco is huge. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, um, so the companies today are Clickable and Carbon Cart, and um, de definitely um, one that is an up-and-coming company started by um, college students, I believe, and the other one that just raised $15 million. So totally different and totally different industries. So um, before I uh, forget to introduce Liz Beyer again, once again, our guest host, um, Liz helps uh, advises companies on their exit strategies and Ezra Royzen, and of course he's our Vader Box regular regular digital media investment banker as well. So let's start with the fun company, Carbon Cart. Two C's. We all live on this planet. We're all affected by the environment. We all shot. We are Team Carbon Cart. The road ahead, as we envision it, is all commerce contributing to a sustainable environment. Global warming is a real issue affecting our world. Forests are being cut down, glaciers are melting. Now is a time when businesses need to take the initiative to reduce their carbon footprint. The transportation sector accounts for roughly a third of all greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels. The advent of online shopping has reduced carbon emissions from personal transportation, but the millions of deliveries each day quickly amount to a significant carbon footprint. So I thought they were great. I mean, I thought it was a really good presentation. I thought it was a really good pitch. I thought the video, the, the pitch was terrific. Mm -hmm. it, it personalizes it. it it's clearly, you get the sense that the founders so care about what they're doing. and hey, here's how we can try to make a difference and we can personalize it in such a way that you can do it by not really changing any of your habits. You know, maybe you type something different into your search box, but you're not requiring any big sacrifice on the part of anyone. And you can do something that theoretically helps the planet. Right, right. So I, I think that's a nice idea. I think the pitch is great. I think that the idea itself is better abstracted a layer. And I don't think that being a destination shopping site itself is probably the best implementation. I think that the, you know, maybe a better implementation is being a service that can plug in at the point of checkout. I mean, the whole point here is at checkout. So why not create a little service that vendors can include, which is do you want to be carbon friendly with this thing and do you want to take a proceeds of funds and put it against some reforestation planting a tree for the, for the FedEx truck that's going to deliver this thing. I think that, to me, makes more sense. If you look at those affinity programs at checkout, they're very successful, like web loyalty, and other um, point of checkout programs that are sort of like the magazines and gum at, at Safeway. I mean, they, they, they do sell a lot, and people will make donations to things and um, buy other kinds of services at the point of checkout. So I would just take their basic concept and apply it, just that concept, to lots of different checkout. So what do you think, though? Is that going to be challenging to get into each of the retailers and ask to be part of, the, part, part of the, their checkout? You know, I think they have a tremendous partner in Amazon, and what this strikes me as is a very, and I don't mean this in a condescending way at all, but a very nice, in some ways, cute company to make some money that maybe helps fund college or whatever. It, it's, they have a great partner. They have a model that will pay them something. Mm -hmm. I don't see this growing into the next billion dollar business, and I think Ezra's absolutely right. A, a, a plug-in at the end is probably the more efficient way to turn it into a real business, but I don't get the sense that that's even what they're trying to do. This is yeah. not about how do I become a billionaire. This is about how can I or how can the four of us make a difference. Do you yeah. think that they could actually, do you think that they're making money right now and can you exist as a small sort of uh, retailer? I mean, in theory Little. you can. I mean, it depends, you know, it depends on what, how, much, how much money you want to make. And it looks right. like, like the way they sit on that ledge, it looks like they're ready for like some movie, some kind of 80s throwback movie, which would be kind of cool. They're all kind of friends and this is their big adventure. But I think the, uh, so I think the trick is, I mean, it looks like they're cool people. It looks like it's a fun company. It looks like they have some interesting ideas. They might be able to make a, a, a smallish commerce site, but you're competing for commerce business okay. against massive players, all of whom are doing all kinds of things and just getting smarter and better at getting commerce customers and keeping them. So you're, you're, you're going into a very tough part of the market 
where I believe there are people who are eco-friendly who would like to contribute, um, you know, find a way to ride on the tide versus versus fight the tide. Well, what so if they were trying to actually build a big business and right. build 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 a business or even raise seed funding, what do they need to to share with an investor? Well, I mean, sorry. Go ahead. I was like, to, to raise seed funding, I'd love to understand what it is they actually need the money for. My limited understanding of what they do is that they're an Amazon affiliate, and so they get paid for sending people to Amazon, and then they'll take some portion of what they get paid and turn it back into a carbon credit. Uh, so I presume their expenses are just things like building a website and operating a website. So right. how much seed funding do they need? need. Okay. I mean, maybe they need some. I, my guess is most of this goes into some form of marketing um, yeah. and, it, and, and, and attracting people to the cause. And maybe there's a way to grassroots this and say, you know, if you are going to buy something, buy it here because at least you're, you're contributing to the, you know, the betterment of the planet. So I think that there are, um, there are ways you can grassroots the marketing. I think that the trick becomes for these guys, again, it's just a very, very competitive space. So how do you take this, get grassroots, maybe abstract the model a little bit, and create okay. more of a, a meta layer than specifically trying to basically be another Amazon. Okay. So competitive space, but good cause, and possibly they could make a business just a small. And fantastic yes. oh, pitch. Done. Yeah. Great, and great pitch. Great pitch. Okay. And it looks like they're energetic and they have a lot of things they could do. So I would say yeah. that... And they're you know, young. You can see the, the, the poster up at college or at the yeah. local yeah. supermarket or, yeah. hey, do this. If they can, can get everybody at their college to be buying right. you know, on their site, that would be that would be good. That'd be terrific. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, let's switch gears then to the, the next C, clickable. So we're Clickable. We're based in New York City, um, and we make online advertising simple and effective. We're the first web service to do this. We focus on search and display and all sorts of other stuff. So we were founded in July 2006. We've been venture backed by Union Square Ventures and Pequot Ventures. We have individual investors like Peter Thiel and Jonathan Miller's investor in our board. We have 55 people based in New York, 20 in New York, and the rest in India and growing. We just launched our uh, limited release uh, 1.0. We've grown to from 60 to 600, about six weeks of customers. We had over like a billion to in advertising people sign up for the last six months. So we're very excited about our growth. So um, they're targeting the small to medium-sized businesses. They're similar to Right Media, which we sold to Yahoo. So clearly there is a need for a service that helps you manage your, your advertising spend across multiple networks um, and really make it simple for the small to medium-sized businesses, which I thought was really interesting that half of the spend actually is uh, by these small and medium-sized businesses spending $50,000 or less a month on you know, these keyword. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, great, it's a great product, clearly great investors. A lot of smart people think that they're doing a lot of great things and similar mm -hmm. investor profile yes, I to uh, that, Vader. That, yes. And uh, so um, I think that the, uh, there's clearly a huge need for optimizing ad spend, online ad spend. There's clearly a huge need for understanding all the complexities of the various networks. Uh, I wasn't 100% clear, and, I've, and I've, I've actually... Um, Matt David? I've, met, oh, I've spoken to David on the phone a couple of times, and I believe they also do the ad buy stuff. So they're, they're doing on, the, on the, the actual ad network and the buy. So it's not just analytics. It's also managing, you know, and managing campaigns. It's actually purchasing, um, which I think is great because I believe these services also open up the doors for more niche ad networks to, for people to see them. Because if I'm going to my dashboard and now I have this other ad um, opportunity to spend from advertisers I may not get through Google, there may be places where I can get connect to higher... Um, and more pre better performing um, opportunities, which I think is kind of cool as well. The, 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 on the downside, it's not doing everything. I think one of the problems with this and with Rubicon Project and other properties out there that are doing these huge, tackling these massive problems, it's can you really solve all of this? I mean, they are massive problems. So my guess is there's, there's a, ma a little bit of focus that will happen over time. Yeah, the difference between Rubicon Project and this, though, is Rubicon really works with the publisher side. These guys right. are working and, and doing yeah. the keyword buys. Yeah. Yeah, and what a gift to the to the small business guy, or not that small, but small enough you right. say, to spend, be spending less than $50,000 a month. Because whatever it is that their business is, it isn't putting ads on web pages. And right. from my early time at Google, that was the, the hardest task for the poor advertisers was where do we put the stuff and what do we pay for it and what right. words do we use. And if you can make it incredibly simple, I was going to say idiot simple, and I mean that nicely. Yeah. If you can make it idiot simple for them, they will be so grateful. It will help them maximize where they put their dollars and, and how they get a return for them. 
Uh, and, and because he must have said in his pitch six times, it's about making it simple. Apple -like I can't think simple. of anything more right. important, right? Apple-like. It just sure. strikes me as, as dead on. If I have to say something critical, it's that David has the same bad habit that I do, <laughs> which is maybe you should talk with words and a little less with hands. But I do that. Uh, far, that that's the pot calling the kettle black. Uh, but anyway, I just think the, the concept is so right on and the key to focus on make it easy for the customer. You're very Cute. passionate about this company and this <laughs> yeah. idea. Well, she likes see. companies to start but with C. The, um, the, I think that the, also the other thing you said was we do search, and search is a, you know, obviously a huge category, super effective. Publishers I work with, you know, they're in, in e-commerce companies, um, you know, search is, is, is one of their main forms of getting customers. They went into we're also looking at display and other kinds of advertising. Just even that difference is not trivial. Display, the thing about search and, and optimizing search advertising is the, the user is in, a, is, in a, is in a workflow where they're, they're right at that moment looking for something. Um, display is a very different kind of advertising because usually display is being forced up and someone may or may not be looking for something. It's not based on a query. It's, mm -hmm, it's, it's mm -hmm. maybe based on a query, mm -hmm. but it may other times not be. And so if they're going to be in the broad display game, there's going to be a whole other set of dynamics that go into optimizing that, which is a whole right. another, you know, another set of around awareness and, and, and sort of act later kind of advertising, not act now kind of advertising. And I think the trick right. becomes how do, you, you know, how do you create simple tools without having feature creep, without becoming hugely complicated, and maybe you just focus on click, which is you know, search, display, you know, search stuff, and, and right. maybe don't necessarily tackle the whole problem. Well, it's also like you talked about display, but you know, I think David, I, if I recall correctly, his average spending price for the, his customers, and he had about 500 the last we spoke about it, probably has maybe 1,000 now or so, right. and he ramped up a lot more, but it's about 2,500 so a month, so I'm not sure if they're going to be spending on display. Right. So I think with $2,500 a month, I mean, I don't know. And that sounds like a budget that just goes right to search or... Right. You know, to your point before, it is a boil the ocean kind of an issue. It's a right. huge problem, but you know, every advertising pitch in the world begins with that cliche about 50% of advertising yeah. dollars are wasted. The problem is identifying which ones. That's what this is working on mm -hmm. and doing it in yeah. a way that a small business can get a handle. There were so many right. companies early on that give you piles of analytics. It took you just as long to analyze the analytics as it did to analyze the raw stuff. Which it is nice that they give you a solution. So, so code, the, yeah. the key is what would you pay for it? So they charge 3 to 5 percent of the advertising spend. And Liz, you and I were wondering whether a small business would actually give up 3 to 5 percent of their advertising spend or pay that on top of their advertising spend. Um, so the return has to be really uh, The huge. market will be efficient. Right. If it's yielding, they will spend. If, the meal, if it's not yielding, they won't. So, so they'll, yeah. get, they'll, get, they'll get an initial bubble it. of customers who believe it's yielding, yeah. but mm -hmm. over time the market will figure out if okay. it is yielding or not. And By the time the market figures it out, they might already be a hugely successful company as far as the early investors are concerned. So even yeah. if they're not, they can just get people to believe they are. Yeah. It could be a huge company. But in, in the long run, yeah. they will have to be yield out disproportionately beyond other means or people can do on their own. Three to five percent is nothing if the return on your initial investment is up ten percent. Right. It's right. a huge amount if the right. return on your investment is up two percent. It all depends, right? right? Yep, yeah, exactly. And they will adjust accordingly if it if that doesn't make sense to their customers. So anyway, I don't even have to ask which company would you invest in because I think we know we're rooting for the little guy, the we're carbon carbon. Well, at this point, my guess clickable. is these guys' valuation so high, I'd probably pick the first one over a small return. 15, I, apparently, 15 million they raised. They, the last yeah. round they raised, they already had a 25 billion valuation, but so I don't know what their valuation. So it's got to be way up there, and I'm sure it's all great. And, uh, and you know, so but I think uh, fundamentally we'll this company will be one that has a, you know, is very, very successful. Oh yeah, I think, and uh, yeah, just They're raised 15 million. Companies to start with C extremely well. There right. we go. And I next week we public, do. Maybe I get to spend time with them. So. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Next good week it. we do. Right. If you, if they ever need to talk to you, so talk to you on Vader. But so next week we'll do companies starting with D. <laughs> so okay, so that's it for this week. We watched Carbon Card and Clickable, and uh, both great companies. And thank you, Liz Beyer, for joining us again. And thank you, Ezra Royzen, as usual. I'm Bambi Francisco. You've been watching Vader Box, and I'll see you next time on Vader TV.